It's crazy. I was just having this conversation with uh, my coach, Mark Montoya, that, uh, that that style is kind of having a comeback, but it's only the, the super high-level elite guys. I mean, we saw Damian Maya pitch pitch, and uh, it's crazy. You know, even uh, you remember that fight with Damian Maya against John Fitch. John oh, yeah. Fitch was known for taking guys down and just grinding them out, and then Damian Maya came out and just did that to Fitch. It's the – the jiu-jitsu has changed a little bit, I think, as far as um, the the whole style, man. MMA is crazy. It kind of goes through these eras if you follow it. It was jiu-jitsu in the beginning because nobody knew jiu-jitsu. Then people learned jiu-jitsu and it became wrestling. You know, the wrestlers took over, man. They were taking everybody down, beating them down, and they couldn't be submitted because their posture is so good on top and everything. And then it kind of went through a striker's phase with Anderson and, and Machida was on a roll when he first came in and you know, I'm sure there's a lot of other guys, and now it's kind of making another turn back towards jiu-jitsu, and everybody's trying to always catch up because somebody new always comes out and starts dominating or some style comes out dominating, and then everybody else plays catch-up. Yeah, they sure do, and, you know, and, and Maya my, my is probably the best example of those three because everybody knows what Maya is going to do from that head-to-the-outside single to he'll he'll fall onto his back and then he'll look to reverse you, then he wants to get your back. Everybody knows what he's going to do, and no one can stop it. Maya might be the best guy in the world. He, I mean, if he could get his shot... Even when Robbie had the title, Robbie's so scary, he's so mean, he's the total package as far as a fighter goes. But Robbie does have a couple of problems if you look at his resume on the ground, which is what Maya would expose. Maya is the most swerved guy in the UFC for not being able to get that title shot, and I'm not sure how much longer they're going to be able to keep it away from him. Yeah, I agree, man. You can only deny him so long. Um, I think, I think Wonder Boy's got to be next. I mean, he's been waiting a while, and he's he's beaten top contenders and stuff. But stylistically, in the welterweight division, it's crazy. You've got three or four guys in the top four, or you know, in the top that all have different styles. So it's pretty crazy. There, you look at it, and there's we got a jiu-jitsu guy who's mostly jiu-jitsu. you got Tyron Woodley who just won the title, who's mostly a wrestler, even though he just won by knockout. you got Wonder Boy who's pretty much a pure striker. It's kind of crazy like the old school UFC where uh, stylistically in the welterweight division, we're going to see which one's king. Yeah, you know, and, and, and the reason Maya popped into my head is because you were talking about Talos wrestling all wrong, but it works. And there's some guys that do that. I got a, I got a teammate, Ed Herman. Ed Herman does the the most junior high crappy. You know, when I used to coach wrestling, if 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 the kids I was working with would do the stuff that Ed Herman does, I'd stop them and make them do push-ups, like to get I want it out of their head. But the one thing with Ed Herman, when I train with him, I can complain all I want. I'm coming up off the bottom. He he gets on top with some of this junk and talus and frankly, Damian Maya. That wrestling is all wrong, but it keeps working. How do you say it's wrong if he's beating guy after guy with it? But I'm telling you, believe it or not, it's terrible. It's it's everything you don't want to do in wrestling, but Maya gets guy after guy drugged down to the mat and puts him away. There's something to be said. Here's the thing. I get, here's what I'm trying to articulate. I'm struggling with him. Here, here's a better word of saying it. When a guy is doing junk that nobody else does, you can't defend it because you've never had it done to you because it's junk. It's and, and, and so it's almost like an innovative way of doing things. Maya gets to this goofy position, his butt's up, his head's down, he's got one leg, and then he falls to his back, but then as he's falling, he's wrapping your leg and he's working on his reversal. I don't know if you saw Maya fought Gunnar Nelson. He made Gunner yeah. and Gunner's a Gunner's a straight up killer. He made Gunner look like it was his first day. But I contend yeah, I, think I, was at that fight. I contend that one of the reasons these guys are so effective doing everything wrong is because the other guy has zero practice in defending that slop because it's slop. So I'm saying this negatively, but I swear to you I mean it as a compliment. They're they're finding a way to make this junk work. And it's so frustrating, to your point. It's so frustrating when it does. Yeah, it, it it's everybody. 
that's where the term unorthodox comes from because everybody trains to defend this and defend that because it's the right way to do it. So you have people, you bring in people that are high level that do things the right way and you get used to defending it. And I'm sure, I mean, I've got guys in my gym and I'm sure you've come across them in the past too where everything they do is so unorthodox and weird, but it works for them. And I think it, uh, it's kind of that situation. It's just like if you're going to spar – you know, boxing or kickboxing with somebody, and you go with somebody from maybe the open class of your gym that doesn't fight, doesn't do anything, they're so spazzy that they hit you all the time because you're used to fighting clean and crisp guys. I mean, I'm not calling these guys spazzes, but I'm saying it's so unorthodox that as a pro, when I go with guys from our open class that are so nervous to go with me, they seem to hit me more than the pros because they're just doing weird, crazy stuff that I'm not ready for. Yeah. No, that's a real thing. I go in and, and I spar with the amateurs all the time. The way our gym is set up now, we have uh, at 1 o'clock the amateurs go for on sparring day, and then at 2 o'clock the pros go. I go in every day early and spar with the amateurs. I get hit more times. Maybe they don't quite hit me as hard, but they I have more shots landed on me with those guys because, to your point, they aren't as textbook. They don't set it up, okay, jab, jab, boom, now the cross is coming. After the hook comes with the tent. They're doing something goofy uh, because they're not as good and not as skilled, but there's something to be said for it, man. That stuff works. It works when you're not ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you, and it's crazy. And, that, you know, I feel like that's what happened to me in my last fight is that uh, – I trained to defend everything the right way, and he came at me with everything the wrong way but effectively. 